And it's time to meet our guest, Esther Kariuki in Nairobi, winner of the 2023 African Banker Prize, who is fighting to provide Kenyan farmers access to innovative financial tools. The aim is to enable them to maximize their chances in an increasingly complex and demanding agricultural commodities value chain. It's a daily mission as head of agricultural activities at the Cooperative Bank of Kenya. She told our journalist, Jefferson Kahinu, what the bank could do for African agriculture. Let's listen to her. Esther, hello and welcome to Initiative Africa. You are head of agribusiness in, at the Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Could you start by telling us why you chose this branch of banking? Yes. Um, I think we all come from most of us. I mean, agriculture is the backbone of our economy. And our kind of agriculture in this part of the continent is supported by small-scale farmers. So we all come from those families. So I myself am a child of a small-scale farmer and I'm a product of a small-scale farmer and myself am a small-scale farmer by extension. And I know the challenges that face any business person, whether large or small, is access to credit and access to financing. And you can now imagine for small-scale farmers. So I don't know whether I chose this path or this path chose me or we chose each other and found each other, but it has been an incredible journey particularly given uh, the infrastructure that we have in Cooperative Bank, that there is a unique bank in this country that has appetite for specifically the small-scale farmers. And it has done well for many years in that model. Yeah. There's an amazing expansion of agribusiness in Kenya with a lot of emphasis on innovation. How do you help these entrepreneurs face these challenges? So interestingly, Cooperative Bank has, over the years, transitioned to be a digital bank by itself as a bank. What that means is that the entire ecosystem of cooperative bank then has been on that journey of transitioning into a digital, to be fully digitized. And that means even the farmers. So we've carried the farmers with us. What we do, we innovate a lot. We have a whole division of innovations where we innovate on products around small scale farmers, helping them with products and um, technology that they can use from online banking that is very, very practical and very simple. Uh, also integrating with other partners out there who offer um, digital products, allowing them to integrate into our ecosystem. And one of the things that we currently are doing is running an amazing partnership with MasterCard Technology, where they've developed uh, a product for uh, farmers and we've partnered with them and we are on a journey of transitioning our farmers into a digital marketplace called Core Bank Soko. So Core Bank is digital and we carry the farmers and digitize their operations. Yes. Where does the money come from and how do you package it to meet your customers' needs? Uniquely, Corp Bank is owned by the farmers. So by that, we have a dedicated resource, financial resource for them, um, per value chain. And then we also work very closely with development partners like the USID. We work with organizations like um, European Development Bank and any other partner who has um, funding for, for the business that we do, particularly in agriculture. So we have our own fund, our own fund that we have appetite to give the farmers. We develop very customized products for the farmers uh, from supporting them with input loans, farm input loans to access fertilizers, agrochemicals, manure, to support them to do the land preparation, all the way to taking care of the crop. We help them with picking advances, harvesting advances, which we call crop advance, that allows them to pick, if it's coffee, to harvest the coffee at the right stage, to transport the coffee to the nearest factory, we also give them working capital financing to allow them and enable them process the produce to preserve the value. And then we give them supply chain finance. They can keep the produce, warehouse it, and sell it across the year so that they also get to enjoy the escalation of price uh, across the year. And we also help them access market. We partner a lot and go deliberately out to look for buyers of commodities and product that we are funding. So that as soon as our farmers harvest, they also don't see too much with the loans and incur the interest. Then we are able to transition that 
to the off-takers, if it's a rice buyer, if it's cotton buyers, the cotton mills, if it's coffee, the coffee traders, we are able to bring them into our ecosystem and our farmers have access to market. So for us, that's a model we've developed and perfected over time. Yes. What about the role of women in agriculture finance? Yes. Interestingly, um, agriculture is largely driven by women. And it's the primary production. If you go to the farms, um, the largest majority of the people that you'll find working the soil are women, carrying their children on their backs or having the child just next to them. So you find the women in the farms. If it's harvesting, it's now proven that women are so meticulous in the farms. If you need people to do good weeding, they will bend the whole day. But then you don't find that translating into the financial space, financial inclusive inclusion space. So women have the least bank account. They provide the labor, most of it family labor, for free. And then the men are the ones who hold the bank account. So I think for me as a woman in the field of financing agriculture, I have been very, very deliberate because when we go into the board of the cooperatives and the farmer organization, you find it's men in the boardroom. And the first thing I ask them, sometimes I find myself as the only woman, and I ask them, but where are the women? And they say, women don't want to put themselves out there to be elected in these positions. And then you ask them, what are you doing to deliberately have them here? And so I think for me, um, even knowing that there's a tool, financial tool, that we can use to incentivize these organizations to include women. So for instance, we work with partners who have either subsidized funding, a cost of funding for organizations that have women in leadership in those organizations. So I tell them if you want to access cheaper funding or preferential rates or this incentive, include women. And so they have to go out there and deliberately look for women. So I think my position um, has helped me be able to carry more women um, from the farms to the boardrooms and to the decision-making levels. Esther Karioki, let's now talk about you. Becoming a banker, was it your initial call? When did you decide that this was what you actually wanted to do? Yes. So incidentally, uh, when I was in high school, I come from a farming background. Um, when I was a little girl, I was a shepherd dress. Is it called? I was a shepherd of sheep. And I'd look after my grandmother's sheep. And I did a good job because I grew the herd. And the sheep knew me. Every time I came from school, they would see me and start crying out for, to be taken out to the field. Then when I went to high school, I did agriculture, which was my best subject. Something happened after high school when I went to the university. I didn't continue with it, but I did sociology and communication from the University of Nairobi. And straight away, I went into banking and found my path in agricultural financing. So it's been a wonderful journey um, straight from where I've been and now financing the farmers and working closely with them. I, I am a farmer. I've become a farmer along the journey. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing because you talk from experience. Um, and then even when we are tailoring the products in the bank, it's very personal because I know climate change is here with me in my farm, in our family farm. And so I'm innovating around what can we do to help the farmers cope with climate change developing products like helping them access uh, water, uh, water storage and water harvesting e e equipment, working with partners who are in that field for them to help us understand what does it mean for farmers to harvest water and keep the water so that it can take the crop throughout the cycle. So I think for me, that's where the journey started and it's been full cycle. Are there yeah. still a lot of obstacles for young women wishing to get into the banking sector? So luckily, I work for a great organization. Uh, Cooperative Bank has uh, deliberate efforts to support women access positions of leadership. So it has been relatively uh, good for me because the organization is deliberate. Our group managing director and CEO, Dr. Gideon Burioki, has been very helpful and supportive to the women in our organization, including them in the board 
of management of the bank and also in senior leadership positions. And that's the thing, because our CEO, our group MD and CEO is a man, but he has made it, he has made a deliberate effort to make sure that we are given positions and we are hard. And when we, he gives us that opportunity, he's been able to realize that women add a lot of value on the table. So I think also women, you prove yourself when you're given an opportunity, it makes it easier for the other women behind you to access those positions. Yeah. What, according to you, are the main challenges facing African banking over the coming years? Yeah, so I think um, the challenges that continue to face us back here in Africa, generally as Africans, because we bank Africa and the African business. So the problems that affect Africa is what we must overcome as banks in Africa. So obviously, um, access to collateral, yeah, access to collateral that people can use to unlock financing, um, legal framework, legal and regulatory framework. A lot of the businesses that we do are not well regulated, and that poses a big risk, obviously, for investors and ultimately for the bank sector. Um, also, the issues of climate change. I mean, even the business of financing agriculture, it's becoming increasingly hard. So issues of climate change, we must continue to innovate around that. Finally, the sovereign debt has become a daunting issue on the continent today. As a banker, what is your analysis? I think banks have a very huge role to play as far as the sovereign debt issue is concerned. Obviously, it's a real issue in our country and in other countries in Africa. But I think as banks, we sit at a very unique and very strategic position to help um, ease the pressure on debt. For instance, what we are doing in Cooperative Bank of Kenya is working closely with government, both national and county government, to help our coffee farmers, number one, be more resilient to climate change so that they are able to produce more coffee, better quality coffee, access better markets, so that we can have more foreign currency coming into the country, which will reduce the foreign currency pressure. Obviously, you know, our debt is in foreign, a lot of our debt is in foreign currency. So if we drive in more foreign currency, it will ease the cost of, of our debt. So the less we import and the more we export, the more we get ourselves out of trouble. And I think we have a unique opportunity, quite honestly, those of us in agriculture lending, to, because our economy is largely agriculture. So if we activate these businesses and these, you know, levels of production back in the community, we are also able to have more people coming onto the tax base, which also uh, broadens uh, our GDP and the debt burden uh, becomes less and less. I think we have an incredible opportunity as banks. And last but not least, you are the African Banker of the Year. Congratulations. Does this award mean to you? Yeah. Yes. I've been declared as the African Banker of the Year. Um, and I'm very happy to have won that award. Number one, because I'm a woman. Number two, because I'm involved in the business of financing agriculture. Number three, because I'm a woman involved in the business of financing agriculture in Africa, in Kenya, smallholder farmer agriculture. And I think I also feel privileged to have work, been working for a cooperative bank, an institution that has appetite for smallholder farmers, an institution that has developed sustainable lending structures and models for smallholder farmers. And it has proven that farmers can access debt and farmers pay their debt and I think for me the award is just um, a testimony that it's doable and it should be scaled in other parts of the continent and it doesn't matter the value chain but the model works and this award is a testimony that the model works.